Welcome to the Real Zero to Hero Kite Camp in Cape Hatteras, North Carolina. Kiteboarding is the fastest growing water sport in the world. Every day you can see men, women, and children ages 6 to over 70 years old kiteboarding. Zero to Hero is a full immersion three-day camp program taking students from rank beginner to self-sufficient kiter. The coaches at Real have been using Zero to Hero since 2001 to teach over 40,000 students worldwide. We've chosen Cape Hatteras for its shallow water, consistent winds, and access to the best lesson center in the world. We are at the beach and ready for water time. Becky, you ready for water time? I'm psyched. All right. Which way is the wind coming from, Becky? This way, behind us. All right, that's side on shore on this beach. Makes it a really safe place for water time. Again, we want to have side shore or side on shore wind conditions for the safest setup. First step is going to be setting up our kiteboarding kite. Let's have you roll that out. Okay, so this is a nine meter inflatable kite. I'm going to hold this kite from the leading edge, right in the center. Anytime you're handling your kiteboarding kite, hold it from the leading edge and you're going to be upwind of the kite. This is going to be the safest place for you to be anytime you're handling your kite when it's deflated or once it's inflated. On the kite, you're going to see we have the dump valve or the out. I'm going to close this up by putting our hand underneath the kite, pushing down. Make sure you push down nice and firm so that dump valve is closed up properly. Put the Velcro tab over it. Next step, we've got our in valve. This is where we're gonna start pumping it up. Other thing you notice here is there's a hose going from the leading edge to the struts. This is a one pump kite, so air, once you put it into the leading edge, fills all the struts. Makes it nice and easy. This is our pump leash. We're gonna secure the pump leash to the kite. This is gonna keep the kite from flying away. Gonna take the pump hose, put it into the in valve, so you want to inflate this kite until it's nice and rigid, okay? So I'm gonna keep pumping, take your time with it. It's a bit of a workout, but it'll get you warmed up to go kiteboarding. All right, so I have the kite, what looks like it's pumped up. When I pick this kite up though, it's still really soft. And the kite doesn't have much rigidity or frame. We want to make sure that this kite is pumped up real hard. And I'm gonna show you a few ways to make sure the kite is pumped up enough. Now hold that leading edge, grab that now. Real firm, okay? Mm -hmm. Nice and solid. Also, when I flick it, it has a lot of rebound. I'm gonna remove the valve. This has a one-way valve for the inflate. I'm gonna push the valve in and take the pump leash off. Now I can stand up and hold this kite from the leading edge. Let's have you try it out. It feels pretty lightweight. Mm -hmm. That's because winds on both sides of this kite supporting it in the air. If it's a windy day, there's gonna be a little more resistance. The kite's gonna to wanna to fly. It's gonna have a lot of lift underneath it. So make sure you hold on this kite until it's secured down to the ground. Got it. So flipping that kite over, we're gonna flip the kite to the left. So our left hand is on top, just like yours is. Right hand underneath. Okay. From the center, you're gonna do it. So if you flip the kite over, good. Wing tip onto the sand. And keep pushing over on the top, good. Keep walking over. So both wingtips are on the ground, and the leading edge is into the wind. Once you have the kite leading edge down into the sand, we're going to take a bunch of sand and secure this kite down. Let's go over the anatomy of this kite. You heard me talk about the leading edge. I just want to tell you about some of the parts we have here. So we've got leading edge is the inflatable tube along the front of the kite. Trailing edge is right around the back of the kite. In between are the inflatable struts. These inflatable struts are ribs that give the kite some support and also allow the kite to float when it hits the water. Okay, so we've got leading edge, struts, trailing edge. The final part is the wing tip. Okay, the wing tip is obviously the tip of the wing. Got it. All right, so the final part of the kite is going to be the bridle system. Let's go around the side over here. We're going to talk about the bridle. The trailing edge, you have a simple pigtail bridle attaches right to the trailing edge of the kite. The leading edge bridle, we have to go underneath the kite. Have you pull this out here? And this is how we make sure it's untangled. So we lift up the kite, look underneath there, there's no tangles, no knots. Let's have you do the same on the other side. 
All right, so this one is actually on the front side. So let's go around, slide it underneath the leading edge, and come back around over here and pull it out. Okay, see any tangles there, Becky? Nope. All right, looks clear. Let's check the trailing edge bridle. You notice the trailing edge had two different colors. A lot of companies have different colors, different attachment points. Just go to the individual vendor, figure out what the proper tuning is for that kite, what the right attachment points are. Got it. All right, so this kite bar here, you're gonna notice the lines are wrapped in a figure eight on the bar. That's gonna keep the lines from getting tangled once you unravel them, okay? It's one of those things figured out a long time ago in kiteboarding. This is the one way to do it, just do it right. We're unraveling our lines into the wind because when we untangle them going back towards the kite, we're using the wind to our advantage. Got it. So you're using your legs to separate center lines to the outside lines. Really, really important to make sure you've separated those two line sets. You can have a friend help by pulling these lines out, having someone in front of you. It's a little easier now, isn't it? Mm -hmm. That's easier. All right. Let's put the center lines down in the middle. Red line is on the left. On this kite, it's white on the right. So I'm gonna put the white down. Now that we've separated our lines, take the kite and pull the kite over the lines. Okay, so let's pick it up from the leading edge. We'll keep the sand on it and just pull it forward. Let's hook up the leading edge lines first. So we're gonna go underneath the kite, pull out the bridle and double check. There's one knot you need to know in kiteboarding and that's a lark's head knot. Really simple, we've got a loop. We're gonna take the line Slide it through the loop, slide this loop over the flying line, cinch it down. It's that easy. Got it. Let's have you try it out on the other leading edge line. Nice. Let's go around to the outside, hook up the outside lines. Now our kite's rigged up. Let's get our harness and booties and hit the water. Awesome. Let's go. Come on. You want to fit the waist harness so it's really snug and it's gonna make sure that you're connected properly to the kite. Okay, where's your belly button? Right here. All right, but good. You always wanna make sure the strap is on top of your belly button, okay? Take this here, hook in the clip, take the side straps. It's gonna be a little bit uncomfortable when we crank this thing down. Once the kite starts pulling off, it'll pull off your abdomen. You wanna make sure it's nice and secure so it doesn't ride up on your chest. All right, let's have you slide on your booties, protect your feet. All right, Becky, just want to review the parts of the bar before we launch the kite. So we have our control bar, and again, red is on the? Left. All right, there we go, somebody's paying attention. So we've got here on the bar, we've got our quick release. This is where we're gonna attach our safety system. This is our depower line, chicken loop, and donkey dick. Okay, so take the chicken loop, slide it into the tip of the harness, Donkey dick goes through there. That's gonna keep you secured on. Next, I take my safety leash. Safety leash attaches to the center line safety system here. And then on the depower line, you just wanna make sure it's cleated off. Okay, you don't wanna have it depowered too much. Just make sure it's cleated off, okay? All right, if I need to release this kite, pull the release and it's gonna pull on one center line. We're gonna end water time by reviewing how to do a self-rescue and using this system. So when I pick up the kite, I'm gonna pick up the kite underneath the leading edge, right in the center. I'm gonna dump the sand off the back. Now I'm in control of this kite. One hand stays underneath. My left hand's gonna go on top because I want the wingtips pointing at the kite flyer. So let's flip it over. Once it's flipped over, I can handle this kite easily just like we did earlier. So the kite is being handled, I've got my arm underneath it. What you're gonna do is gonna walk out into the water. Once you're out at the edge of the wind window and I have the bar, you're gonna turn the kite on its side, one wing tip on the water. We're gonna double check to make sure the lines are, are rigged correctly before we launch it. I'm gonna hook into my safety. When I give you an audible thumbs up, you can let the kite go and fly it out. I'll fly it right out of your hands. Okay. All right. All right, Becky, you're gonna walk out into the water. Once we're perpendicular to the wind, I'm gonna hook up to my control bar. I'm gonna double check the lines, make sure the lines are separated. And then I'm gonna give you a signal, stop. Have you move upwind, move downwind, 
or launch the kite. Okay. All right. Okay, in this scenario, you're too far upwind, so the kite is flapping. Move further downwind. This is the proper position for launch. Let's go too far downwind and see what that looks like. In this position, the kite's really pulling on me and it starts to force forward on you. Stop there. Ready to launch. Let go. Fly the kite up. Now that we're on the water, let's learn how to control the power of the kite. The first way is sheeting the bar. Pushing the bar out depowers the kite, while pulling the bar in powers the kite. When you sheet the bar out to depower, you're lengthening the back lines. That makes it harder to steer the kite due to the slack in the lines. To regain control and power up the kite, sheet the bar in until the back lines are tight. Let's talk about the depower strap. The depower strap is going to be different on some kites. There's a above bar depower strap and a below bar depower strap. This is a below bar depower strap we're using in today's lesson. The depower strap is going to depower the kite by pulling in and tensioning the front lines. You only use a depower strap for small incremental changes in power. You just want to pull an inch of depower at a time. Most of the times when I'm kiteboarding, I pull the depower strap, set it, and forget it. Our final method for controlling power in the kite is by diving the kite in and out of the wind window. To dive the kite into the center of the power zone, the kite gets fully exposed with wind and it's going to give a lot of power. Steer the kite out to the side of the wind window, wind's going on both sides of the kite, you're going to have a lot less power. Tracing the wind window is going to be a great way to get your kite control dialed in. Let's work the kite from 12 to 1 to 2 to three right on the water, back up, three, two, one, 12 o'clock. Once you get this dialed in, you're gonna have great kite control. Kite control is the building block for safety in kiteboarding. Oh, crashed your kite, no big deal. Let's learn how to water relaunch. Once you've crashed a kite, let go of that bar and let the kite do the work. Once it's ready, it's gonna be leading edge down with both wingtips pointing at you. Turn the bar over so that the red is on the left. It's gonna look like your lines are crossed, but they're not. Even if your lines are crossed and the red is in your left hand, the kite is still gonna fly properly. Pull the outside line. When you pull that outside line, you wanna make sure that the bar is fully sheeted out. Once the kite's reached the side of the wind window, Sheet in on the bar, both hands on the bar, and fly the kite off the water. If you pull too much on the outside line and the kite rolls onto its trailing edge, just let go. The kite will reset itself. Let's move on to body dragging. We're going to start with body dragging upwind. Body dragging upwind is a great tool. The main reason is it's going to teach you how to get back to the beach safely as well as get back upwind to your board once you lose it. We're going to start by bringing the kite down in the right side of the wind window. Bring the kite down to about two o'clock. Pull the bar all the way in, full power. Lay down on your side, point your fingers ahead like you're body surfing, and let that kite drag you in the direction that it's going. Your body's acting like a fin, and again, just like body surfing, you're gonna cut through that water. Once we've reached the beach, body dragging to the right side, we're gonna slowly bring the kite up to the neutral position. Then switch hands, Bring the kite down to about 10 o'clock and body drag up wind going to the left side of the wind window. Now the fun part, body dragging downwind. To generate power to the right, start with the kite at 11 and make a hard right pull on the bar to dive the kite through the power zone. Turn left to steer the kite back up through the power zone and repeat. By flying the kite vertically through the wind window, you're getting maximum power and maximum kite exposure to the wind. Remember to make your turns aggressive. Once you get to your downwind body dragging mark, stop by bringing the kite up to the neutral position. You can sheet the bar out and slowly walk up wind. Generate power to the left by starting with the kite at one and make a hard left pull to dive the kite through the power zone. Follow the same vertical figure eight pattern and focus on keeping the kite moving to generate consistent power. 
When learning to body drag, the body system's great. When you get to your downwind mark, kite's in neutral position, it's really nice to have someone hold onto the handle in your harness and help walk you upwind. Now that we've done a few body drags, let's do some circuits, down and back up. Keep practicing these body dragging circuits until you have body dragging wired. Let's wrap up water time by covering self-rescue. It's not if you're gonna need self-rescue, it's when. Self-landing, sudden wind drops or spikes, and gear failure are all times when you'll end your session with a self-rescue. To activate your safety, you wanna get your kite to neutral position, and when you're ready, reach down and pull the safety release. Every kite's got a little different safety release, but they all work the same. Pull that safety release, your leash is gonna flag the kite off of one line, and the kite's gonna fall straight downwind of you. The next step is getting from your bar to your kite. First and foremost, grip the line with an open hand. Open grip, you never want to wrap the lines around your hands or your finger. If you do that and the line tenches, it can really tear up your hand. So again, open grip on the line, pull hand over hand until you get to the bar. Once you've reached the bar, we're going to take that one line you just pulled in on, and you're going to wrap that line around the bar end. You see here, I'm wrapping that one line around the bar end a bunch of times. This is going to secure that kite so it's not going to fly. In this scenario, one line is significantly shorter than the other three lines on the bar. This kite cannot fly. Once I've wrapped the line around the bar end, then I'm going to figure out the rest of that excess around the outside bar ends. My next step, once I've secured one line down, is to grab all four lines and wrap them onto the bar. Take all four lines and figure eight them over the bar ends. It's a little difficult because the kite's still gonna be pulling, so we really wanna make sure that my hands are not wrapped around the lines. To do this, reach out, grab all four lines, pull those lines in up to the bar end, and wrap it around. You're gonna continue to do this in a figure eight manner so the lines are slowly wrapping onto the bar. Each wrap I put on there, I'm getting that much closer to my kite. Once I reach the kite, take those extra lines and wrap them all around the end of the bar. It's gonna secure the lines to the bar and make sure this bar can't float away. Now that I've reached my kite, I can not only use it as a flotation device, but I can also use it to help me get to shore. Move across the leading edge of the kite till you're at the wingtip. Grab underneath the wingtip and take a strut, or you can even grab the handle that's in there, pull that strut towards you, and the kite is gonna flip on its side. Once the kite flips on its side, you can take the upper bridle, and it will allow you to hold the kite and drag you in. All else fails, just hold onto the leading edge of the kite and kick in. This is a good time to review two safety points. One, no whale watching. Don't go farther than you wanna swim or self-rescue in. Two, don't ride to the point of exhaustion. If you're exhausted and you have to self-rescue, you're gonna be cooked and you could put yourself in danger. So those two safety tips, we're gonna carry through all your kiteboarding career, so remember them.